welcome to the Idea Space podcast. This is a place for entrepreneurs to learn strategies that help us make business and life easier. And this month, I'm challenging the idea that we as entrepreneurs have to do things a certain way. So if you've been in this world for a while, or whether you haven't, you recognize that there are people out there who will should all over you. You should do it this way. You should you should say this thing. And I've had that too. Coaches, systems, programs, trainings, they all feel, I well, I felt like it was their way or the highway. And the thing is, we get into entrepreneurship because we desire some kind of freedom, either time freedom, money freedom, creative freedom. And then sometimes we find we're back in a situation that makes us squirm because it doesn't feel right for us. Our freedoms have been taken away in the way that like we should do this or that, but it it can feel out of alignment for us. And so that's what I want to talk about this month, how to get back into alignment and do things your way. And all of this, when I was thinking about everything I wanted to teach you this month, it reminds me of a time back in 2000 and 2001 when I was teaching English at a high school and all of my colleagues were very smart, each had their own styles and I had learned to take from each of them what I liked and make it my own inside my classroom. Then someone went to a professional development training and heard about a new way to do things. And she came back and she talked to our curriculum head and she kind of convinced him that this way was the way that would solve all of our problems. And she came up with what everyone thought was a revolutionary idea it was to teach Charles Dickens Great Expectations by chunking down each chapter week by week throughout the course of the school year. This was the gist. The entire ninth grade, ninth grade, ninth grade freshman was going to read it and process it together, having like a common experience with a complex piece of literature. And it kind of hit all the shoulds of education at that time. Community reading, chunking down ideas, cooperative learning, and critical thinking. Personally, I thought it was a terrible idea. Now, my problems with teaching high school English were almost always rooted in what our district wanted us to teach. And it was always some unrelatable to modern kids piece that was authored by a long dead white dude. And I was like, oh, I've literally gotten into teaching to do this all differently. Like I did not want to teach this kind of stuff. I did. I wanted to teach stuff that resonated with the kids to make them learn to love reading and thinking. And I didn't want to make my reluctant readers because I really worked with a lot of reluctant, reluctant kids. You know, they, they weren't in school because they wanted to be there. And I, I didn't want to make them suffer through writing that didn't resonate with them. But because of the district's approved book list, I I just rarely felt in control of what I was able to do. But at least I could decide how to teach it all within the microcosm of my classes. But then this new program came out and this new boss wanted us to teach all the things, all the same ways, including in our classroom. And that was the Great Expectations endeavor. And I felt like it took away my control. The thing is, as a teacher, you often feel like you have control over very little, right? Like there's education policy out there. You don't have any control over that. You don't have any control over what time school starts. Like it's 723. Okay, I'll be there. Or you don't even have control over when to eat because maybe you got fourth period lunch and now you're eating at 1028 AM, right? Like there's very little. But the hows that happen inside your classroom are sometimes all you have some days. And when that was taken away, I was really deflated because even though there's no way in hell I consider myself a subversive or even rebellious, like I really like rules and I respond to order and structure because I'm a pretty solid team player. But that year I felt like a caged animal when we started teaching great expectations. I was seething over every edict that came from on high. And you might be wondering, like, why the hell is she going on and on about great expectations? Yes, it was ancient history inside the literary canon. It's also ancient history inside my life because it was 20 years ago. But here's the thing that ties it all back for you. Entrepreneurs usually get into our gig because we want freedom. And I don't think I realized how much I coveted my freedom until I spent that year with Pip and Estella and Miss Havisham. The minute that you step into entrepreneurship, you first realize how much you do not know. And then you realize how much damn work it all is. But the best part, the thing that keeps you going is that you have freedom, this freedom that you've been craving for just so long, freedom to do it your way, which also creates the freedom to make all the mistakes because at no time 
Will a school administrator unexpectedly arrive at your door 30 seconds before you start teaching to observe you in front of 27 teenagers? Right? Like you're not going to get that. You're not going to get the debrief two weeks later with all the things that you can improve. But if you listen as an entrepreneur to all the webinars and the gurus and the systems and the programs, they all make it sound like there's a zone of one size fits all. Like there's a solution that all entrepreneurs need to implement to avoid any failures, a plug and play option that will work for everyone. And I really am here to pull back the curtain and say, there is not, there's no plug and play option. There's not something that works for everyone. It really is a matter of navigating and figuring out which failures are the right ones to learn from. And so, yes, there are best practices, tactics, and strategies. There are tools. And some you will absolutely love. They'll feel really natural to you. Others will feel abhorrent or even just an uncomfortable stretch. And so I'm curious for you, what is something in your business that you've been doing because someone further ahead of you on their journey told you, you have to do it this way? Or they've said, that's just the way it's always been done. If it doesn't resonate with you, there are two options. Do it anyway and white knuckle through it. Give it a try, see what happens. Or find a path that works for you. I I promise entrepreneurism is a way to freedom. That's why we got into it. But it's up to you how to make that happen. You will not escape the mistakes. There will be programs you create that bomb or sales pages that don't convert. You'll spend money that you feel like you wasted, but I promise none of it is a waste because every mistake is your way forward. And and the same for me, inside every program I offer, I share best practices. I give suggestions and roadmaps, but there is never a one size fits all way because your business is your classroom. You get to do it your way without the principal standing over you or your curriculum director standing over you. So I'd love to hear one thing that you've decided you're not going to do the way that everyone else is. For me, there's a couple of things like there's, you know, sales pages or, and webinars. I don't really like to do that the way that other people do it. And I'm inviting you to join me throughout the month for the ways that you can create content that feel good for you so that it works for you, for your specific audience and for your specific brain. I'm going to offer you some things to try, ways to try it. And again, you'll get to decide what works for you, but just consider it all an experiment. And just as a heads up, this month, I'm closing entry to the Content Creator Studio. That's my membership all about content creation. And believe me, if you think there's a one size fits all inside there, there's not. There is no one size fits all for content either. And I'm closing it on March 21st, just to really focus on my founding members in there. I really want to give them my full attention, tweak what's working and just serve the hell out of them. This is not something I'm trying to like create an urgency around just to open it up again the following month. I won't be opening it up until um, later spring or early summer. And when I do open it up, it will be at the increased price, much higher than the $37 a month. The stuff that I'm offering there is not one size fits all. It's very cultivated for where you are, what you need. So I would love to have you join us for weekly calls, support, teaching, community, and you can grab your founding members spot at genlity.com forward slash studio. And the goal is to give you some strategies that give you the freedom, the options and ways to do it that connect with your audience and feel good to you. I'd love to see you jenliddy.com forward slash studio. And I will see you next week right back here for more doing it your way content creation. See you then.